Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, depending from where you are connecting. Uh, so it's a great pleasure for us to have you today with us uh, to discuss this important topic related to animal breeding and one health in Africa, which is the issue of data and their exploitation, the capacity on the continent to uh, be able to use the power or the potential of data to make meaningful decisions and that's why this consortium was able to come together to uh, be able to gather us all of us today and discuss or start a discussion on the matter of synergy of data science bioinformatics and capacity building addressing multi-country challenges for animal breeding and one health this is, of course, in Africa. So just before we start, just a few uh, housekeeping uh, notes. The first thing is that the presentation will be recorded and shared, so we don't have to worry about that. And also to inform people that uh, what we'll be discussing will be publicly available. And please, uh, when we are not talking, is, is when possible, let's keep our mic at least uh, uh, off same as our cameras, just to allow those who are in challenging areas to not to uh, be having difficulties in connecting. And also, please, uh, when possible, you can be texting your, your question, uh, typing your questions on the text and your comment as well. Of course, at the end, we will have a Q&A session where we have exploit all the text and also have the oral questions at the, on, on that session. So this presentation will be on uh, three main parts. The first one should be just to take a few minutes to share with you an overview of the institution which are partnering today to make this presentation. And the second part will be um, really a presentation on the synergy of data science and bioinformatics and the WebGIS uh, platform to be able to trust, track, to map, uh, animal breed uh, activities or breeding movements, one health activities, etc. And the last session will be the Q&A. So uh, our uh, first presenter today is uh, uh, Professor Eric Shakawa. So just allow me to introduce him and uh, I hope his camera is also on so that people should be able to see who we are talking about. So. Uh, Prof. Eric Shakawa is the uh, network manager of the African Union uh, Development Agency, Southern African Network for Bioscience, which is SAMBIO, uh, which is also a shared research platform and innovation research and innovation platform uh, for collaborative research in health and nutrition in Africa. So he provides the overall leadership of running the network, and he also manages, administer, and further the visions of um, and mission and objective of the Bio Network and scaling successful uh, uh, bio project in 14 countries in Africa, including DRC in Southern Africa, including DRC and Madagascar. So today, uh, Prof. Eric will be mentioning or presenting about Elder Nepad and Sun Bio uh, initiative. Please, Prof. Eric, you have the floor. Uh, thank, thank you so much, uh, Christian, and, and uh, greetings to all the colleagues and um, the researchers and um, everyone involved. And um, so we we are quite pleased. I'm based in Pretoria in South Africa, but just physically, uh, but we also uh, travel across the continent and collaborate with different partners. So this is SunBio is an is one of the networks under AUD and EPAD, um, which also include the sister network to Becca, uh, Becca Uri Hub. So we are quite uh, pleased to be um, working together with all the partners, including Uri and and all, and and in 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 context what. Um, we work on in bioscience is it's been is meant to complement what Becca is already is doing. So we are looking at health and nutrition, but I'll get back to that. 
But this is part of a bigger program under the AU DNA part, looking at technology innovation. Um, and then, of course, there's some aspect of uh, industrialization as well. Uh, and then cross-cutting is knowledge management. Um, so I think that's that slide kind of summarizes. So you have a lot of cross-cutting issues that we deal with in the networks as we kind of look at innovation in the uh in on the ground in the member states um in the continent next slide please okay so just a bit about uh, sunbio which is what uh so we we are a collaborative platform for scaling up innovations there is and and the thinking in in this aspect is there is a lot of work that's happening on the ground in the continent. And there's some very interesting and successful projects uh, that have worked in one or two countries, but some of them have not been scaled to make impact across the continent. Um, so, and, and, and in terms of knowledge generation, as a continent, we are not doing that badly. Uh, we are doing relatively well. We generate knowledge. Uh, sometimes we recycle a bit <laughs> the knowledge, but the translation aspects of the knowledge into useful products that can help the people um, that are on the ground is sometimes lacking. And so we are not, so we have decided as a network that we are not looking at research per se, but we are looking at innovation, which is looking at invention plus reaching the market. Because at the end of the day, we want our products to get to the user, whoever the user is. Maybe the user is someone who is taking reagents next door or who is like in, in terms of animal, it, it might be taking the vaccine next door or it might be using the semen that's coming from your research platform or things like that. So we need to get move, you know, new inno innovations or new inventions from one point to to the next way it's uh, way it's supposed to be used, and we are also looking at health and nutrition. This is where, and these two are intertwined based on the agenda twenty sixty three and STISA. You can't talk of health without talking of nutrition, and health we look at it in the broader sense, which is uh, the one health. But on the nutrition side, I'm just explaining what we, the logic behind uh, what we do. Um, we have deliberately not put it as agriculture because there is a lot of players in the production side of, uh, of things. But there are very few that are playing in the space where we are looking at getting some of whatever has been produced to contribute to the, the well-being of the people. Uh, of the citizens of this continent. That's why we are looking at in, in nutrition, for example, in the in animal in anim, in human health, for example, you would know that we have iron deficiency in in pregnant women, in in uh, in teenagers, and all that. And this has been a big problem all along. We have problems with. Uh, we have been doing feeding programs across the continent forever, but still malnutrition is a problem. So maybe we thought maybe someone has to bridge the gap between the production and the nutrition. Next slide, please. So that's what SunBio is about. So it's a platform where all these players can come in, but geographically, we were covering most of the southern part of the region and uh, Baker was covering East and Central Africa. Then you also had other sister networks that were operating in 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 in, um, in North Africa, but in and also in in West Africa. Um, they would struggled. They uh, they didn't survive that long. And these are some of the countries. But the idea is, if we want to, if we want to innovation and and to to thrive and to to translate whatever knowledge we need we need infrastructure but the infrastructure is 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 not evenly distributed across our countries so we need to have state of the art infrastructure that we can share like the platform you would have at your 
at URI or at the CSR in South Africa or other places across. So can we say that infrastructure so that we don't keep on investing on things that we already have in the, another part of the region? Then we also have to pull resources together to do Im impact research. So this is problems that need deep, more than one country to solve. For example, foot and mouth is one of those, or the sort of work that Yuri is doing, or malaria, for example, if it's in, in um, you know, in human health, things like that, or some other zoonotic diseases. Then we need to scale up innovations. And, and this is what we are looking at. Um, so can we bring the little money that we have from all over and then scale up so that it's a bit bigger, then we can actually do something that is significant. Because there's very little projects happening everywhere. We need to pull those to get uh, to get better impact. Next slide, which might be my last slide or second last. So some of the, just to look at some of the priorities, uh, nutrition, so we're looking at alternative sources of protein and carbohydrate and all that. Value addition, very important. You know that our most of our uh, food, especially packaging in the continent, it's not fit for purpose. We lose a lot of, a lot of uh, food or a lot of nutrition because of poor packaging. Uh, the packaging is not meant for the, our environment. Then one health, and where we are also looking, I just highlighted, looking at capacity building and research and innovation and also surveillance of diseases and all that. And then the modern tools, including your digital tools, the AI and the ethics that come with it. Next slide, please. We're also looking at entrepreneurship and industrialization, especially looking at inclusivity. The, we have some members of our society that are not participating in the in the economies fully, youth and women and, and, and things like that, or even people with disabilities and all that. So we think we need to also start looking at those so that they can they can add value. And then of course, because of the challenges that we recently um, um, faced with your COVID and all that, but also when you look at the climate change and all that, we need to really understand using the modern tools, look at uh, the movement of pests and, and, and pathogens, which are really some of the important things. Then another area that we think is important and we have started worked a lot on that is looking at adding value and using indigenous knowledge systems. Even in animal health, we have done some a very interesting work uh, in Zambia, looking at for people that cannot use, for example, acaricides, you know, to manage, you know, pests in in animals. What could they use um, based on the indigenous knowledge? So this is what SunBio is, and I think I thank you. I hand over back to you, uh, Christian. Thank you. Uh, Christian? Yeah, okay. Sorry, sorry. I was muted. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. And uh, that is wonderful. And it's important for us to understand that to make significant, significant impact to the Agenda 2063 of the African Union, we need to move from research to uh, industrializations and uh, product development, etc. And that is something that cannot be achieved by one country. It is in synergy, most of us. And it is very important to understand that entrepreneurship and technologies are fully to be involved. So we can see here from SunBio, uh, NEPAD, uh, from SunBio that they, they are already positioned for Southern Africa and also to support other regions of Africa to achieve this objective through the activities they are doing in nutrition and health. So the second presenter should be uh, from Baker Ilri Hub, which is uh, Catherine Ziumo. Catherine, are you there? Catherine? 
Yes, I'm yes. here. Thank Hello, you. everyone. So just for me to introduce to you Katrin uh, Ziomo, which is a senior scientist and the leading uh, Bioscience Eastern and Central Africa program at ILRI, International Astro Research Institute. She's a plant breeder with a bold experience in the maize molecular breeding from extending from the Donald Danford plant science in the US to Pompanier in Africa, where the, her effort really contributed a lot in the development of drought and early maturing maize in only uh, 120 days. And she also led the integrated genomic service and support platform at Baker Erie Hub and aiming to facilitate the molecular breeding in Africa by offering high quality, high density SNP genotyping services and allied breeding and statistical support that are needed by farmers, crop and livestock. So uh, Catherine will be sharing with us the vision aligning to what is coming also from Southern Africa, the new vision on how do we use the technology platform Abika to transform agriculture and achieve the SDG goal. Catherine, uh, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Christian. Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning to others who are not on this continent. I'm going to tell a brief story about Becca and where we are in launching Becca 2.0. Uh, Becca has achieved uh, quite a lot in the past 15 years in terms of capacity building for African researchers in modern biosciences. There's been a hub that has seen uh, more than 500 scientists come through. Uh, the scientists or researchers came through either as individuals or in, in groups and for a short term skills enhancement course and also for longer term like uh, through the ABCL fellowships. Uh, but upon reflection and also seeing, looking at those uh, achievements, we see that there's a need to take those innovations further, or to take the research and really translate it into possible solutions for, um, for, for Africa or for the continent to contribute significantly to food security. So what we are looking at in Baker 2.0, it's still to create an ecosystem that still supports scientists or researchers, that still mentors scientists, that still mentors researchers, but now take it a step further and catalyze and incubate and coordinate and empower that research in order to lead to product development. So Becca 1.0 was anchored on three pillars of research, technology platforms, and capacity building. But we see now we're still doing the same things, but leading to a product. We've done a lot of research and a lot of publications came through uh, Baker, publications either for master's students, for graduate students, but we now want to take um, another dimension of product development. So we are looking still at the innovative technology platforms that we have and how do we create this hub and um, centralize the facilities but still have regional nodes in different countries. We want to leverage on the alumni who are in different countries, how do we create communities or nodes in the different countries? And we're not only focusing on um, the 18 countries that are in Eastern Central Africa, but we have expanded to all of Africa as we have already been doing this, but this change is, is really to officiate that uh, arrangement or those engagements. We have had trainings in uh, Nigeria, trainings in Southern Africa, and trainings in other countries that were not initially in the 18 countries. So we want now to expand that and really identify those innovations which are now closer to the market, which need a different set of trade, a different set of training, a different set of skills to be able to get to the market. So our technology platform still provide what we have been doing and we see an opportunity in strengthening, in strengthening the genomics, the sequencing, and using modern tools to be able to uh, carry the research that we do. So still, this still remains a hub where people can come, or fellows now can come 
and be trained, but they take it back to their countries. And it's still the research has to align with the national priorities or regional priorities. For example, in maize, we see that um, the maize lethal necrotic virus disease is transboundary. It has caused havoc in East Africa and moving even to Southern Africa. So how do we still identify people that can champion that research in the different countries and also align that research to national priorities? So we are looking at also business development and professional development. So still, this if you look at this, it's still capacity building. But we're now doing capacity building in a different way. Rather than have a fellow come and spend six to nine months in Nairobi towards a PhD or towards a master's, we want to add another dimension of business development. So they will learn the skills of entrepreneurship, the skills of developing a product that can be marketed, that can still scale and also be sold in different countries. So we're, we're strengthening the business development and professional development uh, angle. So with these changes, it also requires a different state of um, stakeholders, a different set of partners, in addition to what we're, who we have been working with. We still have or we still work with the conventional donors or the traditional donors that helped actually create Baker. And we also want to strengthen our partnership or engagements with AU, NEPAD, and with SunBio. And it, um, from our Prof. Eric's uh, presentation, it's very clear that uh, our goals or our visions are still aligned or somehow they meet. We still want to find or advance technologies or find um, uh, how we can get technologies or increase access to modern technologies in Africa. And where we see bioscience is holding promise, it could be in agriculture is what Becca is trying to do, and in health is what SunBio is doing. But how do we come together and tackle those challenges and address those challenges? So that's where we are in, um, in Becca 2.0. We're still looking at the conventional donors, traditional donors, but also trying to link more or strengthen the linkages with private sector and uh, private companies. The good thing about private sector is when we talk about business development or professional development, they do have the resources, they do have the capacity to be able to help us be able to do that. So I will stop here and um, hand over back to Christian. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine. And uh, here is, we understand perfectly the synergy between SunBio and uh, Baker Ely Hub and their capacity on riding on the past successes and the connection with the NAS to be able to move research to product development and impact at the ground level. And this time, uh, making sure that we catalyze, we incubate, coordinate, and empower uh, scientists embedded international priorities across Africa. And for that, we also need then a multi-stakeholder platform to be able to achieve these objectives. And to really do that in matter of livestock, uh, the next presenter will be talking about uh, 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 APNET, African Animal Breeding Network. It's Dr. Isido Waga. Isido, you are there? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Isido. So Isido is a researcher and the Royal Society Newton International Fellow based for the, at the Center for Tropical Astrogenetics and Health and the Highland Lab at the, in Scotland at the University of Edinburgh. So his current research involves uh, connections and application of animal uh, breeding tools to livestock genetic programs in Africa through uh, uh, different activities in which he's really examining and uh, developing, uh, exploring genomic data and phenotypic, phenotypic record of thousands of pure and crossbred, purebred and crossbred dairy cows in East Africa in order to develop a breeding approach that can be used in Africa to produce suitable crossbred cattle with the desirable uh, production, hull and resilience trait required for a range of tropical uh, dairy system, and this is also what uh, uh, he's supporting a lot, African Animal Breeding Network, and he's going to give to us an overview of uh, how uh, AppNet has evolved and what is uh, meant to achieve. 
is that you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Christian. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. And I will introduce uh, today the African Animal Breeding Network, uh, ABNET. The African livestock are well adapted to different environments, but they face many challenges, uh, including productivity and resilience to some disease. And in the past, there were many initiatives uh, to improve uh, productivity in Africa, but these initiatives were not uh, successful, and if uh, successful, not uh, sustainable. So there was a need to put in place a platform uh, to promote or uh, to drive sustainable livestock genetic improvement in Africa. So to give a short background, how ABNET started. Uh, during the All African Animal Agriculture Conference uh, in Accra, Ghana, uh, 2019, uh, many experts in animal breeding and genetics from Africa and also uh, in the diaspora, they met uh, to discuss how they can put in place a platform to support the livestock genetic improvement in Africa. And after that meeting, there was a design meeting at the International Livestock Research Institute uh, in Nairobi in November 2019, where uh, we reviewed the challenges in livestock production and genetic improvement uh, across Africa, all the regions and then uh, design the ABNET. And in 2021, 1st of June, ABNET was uh, officially launched and hosted by the Center of Excellence for Livestock Innovation and Business at Egerton University uh, in Kenya. Now, I, I will talk about the pillars of ABNET. First, what is the vision of uh, ABNET. The vision of ABNET is promote a resilient, sustainable, efficient, and profitable livestock uh, system in Africa. And this is based in four pillars. So the first pillar is multi-country genetic evaluation, which is the flagship pillar of the ABNET. And that includes how we can support countries to carry out the national genetic evaluation and after the national genetic evaluation, they can pull data together, resources together to carry out a cross-country genetic evaluation. Because in Africa, we have many transboundary uh, breeds. So these breeds can be used in joint genetic evaluation uh, across countries. And we have not did the preliminary study to show that pulling uh, data together increase uh, genetic gains uh, in dairy cows. So the second pillar is professional development. And in professional, under professional development, ABNET is influencing uh, curriculum development uh, in academia, for example, how, uh, what topic uh, university can include for sustainability of livestock genetic improvement in Africa and also capacity building for early careers. For example, in, uh, during the first quarter of 2022, the first inaugural ABNET training was uh, conducted uh, at Egerton University and supported 48 early career uh, scientists uh, from 30 countries. And the topic cover included uh, how to record livestock data, how to estimate genetic value of uh, genetic value of uh, animals and how to design uh, breeding programs for uh, uh, African livestock. And under pillar three, advocacy and awareness business development. So under uh, this pillar, ABNET is uh, promoting uh, communication uh, between different uh, stakeholders, policy makers, to uh, influence uh, livestock genetic improvement in, uh, in Africa. 
and also promoting um, uh, uh, circular bioeconomic, for example, uh, promoting uh, emission reducing uh, practices, for example, in uh, livestock uh, production. And the last pillar is collaboration, networking, and partnership. And under uh, this pillar, ABNET is linking public sector, industry, and academia to work together for sustainable livestock genetic uh, improvement in Africa. And all this is done under the overall coordination of the Secretariat. And uh, to finish, ABNET is open to uh, anyone. You can join uh, at any time. And uh, if you go to the, web, the, the ABNET website, uh, there is how to join, and it is easy to join. And thank you very much for uh, this opportunity. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Isida. And uh, it's very important to understand how ABNET is connecting also to Baker Ildi Hub to Sion Bio and to AU Nepad, particularly by the fact that it's also bringing, bringing together all African breeders and their friends from across the world to be able to make a meaningful transformation in Africa animal breeding through the different uh, uh, pillars that we can see here. And we can see also the issue of collaboration, even in data networking and partnership to be able to make the transformation. And it is thanks to this capacity of African Animal Breeding Network that it was requested by IV, uh, AU to serve as the convener for the Animal Seed Working Group for Africa in the AU uh, uh, Agricultural Seed and Biotechnology Program. So this is important to understand how this setting is coming to boost animal breeding, to boost agriculture, food security and nutrition in Africa. And this will not be done without today, without the input and the sustainable use, efficient use of all the technologies available. So that's why the, the next component of this, uh, the next stakeholder or the stakeholder, another stakeholder our contributor in this presentation is the Center for Tropical Livestock Genetic and Health, which I'm going to present just as a strategic alliance between the Rosley Institute, the Scotland Rural College, and the International Livestock Research Institute. And that alliance is mostly to develop tools, technologies, and innovation to enhance resilience, productivity, efficiency, and uh, environmental sustainability of tropical livestock production system, particularly for smallholder farmers in low and middle income countries working in Africa and Southeast Asia for now, but with the capacity to intervene and contribute to activities all over the world. And you can see that uh, Center for Tropical Livestock Genetic and Health is having for now five key programs, poultry genomics and genetics, poultry biotechnologies, uh, dairy cellular resource, dairy genomics, and the small remnant programs. These are the programs supported by CTHH, and you can reach uh, the, uh, the, the, the website to be able to connect to all the pillars and the scientists working under it to see how we can support countries in Africa. Then you can see the other key pillars coming here or programs is the data and breeding system because it is very important for us as we are talking, discussing today, to understand that data is key. Data is almost everything. We cannot improve if we don't know what we, don't, we have. So, and we need the sustainable our capacity building, the critical mass of expertise to use this data in different domains to be able to make meaningful decisions and to be able to make the required transformation. So this is what, uh, um, the Center for Tropical Livestock uh, is contributing to. It means to afford all the platform, all the network in San Bio, in West Africa, in Southern Africa, wherever we are, to support national partners to be able to boost their productivity. And for us to be able to do that, we first need to understand the challenges, which are really 
pinning down animal breeding and one health implications in Africa. As we said, the first is to have the critical mass of breeders in Africa. That's why all sons of Africa and their friends are coming to say, how do we support the breeding and sustainable development of livestock in Africa? There is also issue of low investment. And uh, you may have understood from Isidore the issue of the pillar on advocacy. Just to mention that it is important for all of our, for all donors and stakeholders, national and international partners, to understand the input and the contribution of livestock uh, in food and nutrition security and the achievement of the sustainable development goal. And for that, we need to have long-term plan. But we can't plan if we don't have data. We can't do projection. So it is very important to do that and to build the capacity to be able to improve the administrative and organizational structures and meet some challenges, try to tackle some of the uh, wicked issues coming like the climate change that we have to delete whatever we want. And most importantly, we need access to the data from animal breeding from One Health and the Allied Science to be able to harness all the potential that exists on the continent. And that's why we also need to understand the implication of One Health in that genetic improvement. One Health, when we are dealing about sustainable intensifications of agriculture and livestock breeding in Africa. And that is why we will have the next presenters, uh, Prof. Sp uh, Stephen Opio from Ohio State University, we should be talking about introducing Patira, which is uh, uh, an organization to support us achieve the objective. Prof. Or it is uh, um, peace. Please. Yes, please. You are the one to take the floor, please. Sorry. Um, thank you so much, Christian. Um, so my name is Peace Abe, and I am a researcher. I am a biostatistician and a data scientist. Um, I work with Case Western Reserve University, Macquarie University Research Collaboration, where we generate vast amounts of data, implement various health research protocols in various um, diseases, um, and also manage various databases. Um, at Magma Consultants International, I am the co-founder and the director. And um, today we are here uh, to strengthen the synergy or data science, bioinformatics in addressing the various challenges in uh, animal breeding and one health. So as we have seen uh, from the previous presenters, many of the challenges that we are seeing are going to require a generation of more information. More data is going to be generated if we are to be able to address uh, the various challenges in animal breeding and one health. So at Magma Consultants International, we offer data science services we specifically pride ourselves in training uh, and capacity building of various research scientists um, across Africa and beyond. We have in the past trained um, these scientists to be able to manage their data, to uh, manage databases, to visualize data, but also we train them to model um, the outcome of uh, various diseases but also to analyze and understand um, genomics data, um, to also be able to combine uh, genomics data with phenotypic data, integrate this information, and be able to address um, these challenges. So we do analytics, we train um, all scientists at different levels in various types of analytics, including prescriptive analytics, as well as predictive analytics. We also do contract research, um, both statistical, uh, biostatistical services, we offer them, but we also train 
um, at different levels so that we are able to understand the data that's being collected, but also to understand the need to collect that data and be able to make sense out of that data. Now, aside from that, we also specifically emphasize um, understanding training for database creations. So in, in Africa, we are having challenges with databases. Uh, we have many animal breeders that are collecting information, but we do not have enough capacity to um, we do not have enough capacity to have all the data in one place. So we emphasize, we train so that we are able to have our own databases. In that way, it is easier for us to be able to access the data, but also to use the data for decision making. Now, when the data is in those databases, we also train and also offer services on how to process the data um, so that you're able to curate the databases um, in the best way possible. Um, on the other hand, we also train and offer services in um, data collection, uh, how to collect the data, what tools to use to collect the data, and how to manage the data that's being collected. So basically, um, our role in this and what we would do is to again emphasize capacity building. It is important that when we are addressing these challenges, we understand how to interpret, how to manage, collect, govern, and secure our own data. And going forward, we shall be demonstrating um, a few of the things that we do, that we've done in the past, and that we hope to do uh, with this team in regards to addressing challenges in animal breeding, as well as One Health. Uh, thank you, Christian. Thank you. Thank you very much, this And uh, I think the, I can say the best is to come during the uh, next presentations. And for those who can join also and consult the the website of Magma Consultant, there is a lot, a lot to benefit from this expertise. And um, also as collaborator in this uh, initiative is uh, Patira, which is represented by uh, Prof. Opio. Prof, you are there? Yeah, yes, yes. yes I'm here. Can, can, can I share my screen? Yeah, I can stop sharing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. While Prof is sharing, I can introduce him. Uh, Prof. Opio is uh, a bioinformatics research scientist at the Ohio State University in the USA and uh, an affiliated scientist also, and he has been consultant for, at URI for many years. He's also the co-founder of the Patira Data Science and a visiting scientist at the University of uh, Sacred Heart at Gulu in Uganda. So his research focuses mostly on breeding, bioinformatics, and uh, all the omics, while his passion really lies in uh, capacity building for African scientists, researcher, and uh, student. That's why, most, despite being based in the US, almost every month, every two months, he's in Africa, involved somewhere in the training, and uh, we really appreciate your support. Please, you have the floor to share about Patira. Well, thank thank you, you very much, Christian. Uh, again, uh, for that introduction, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon where you are. So I'm going to just briefly talk about Patira. Uh, Patira is based both in the US and in Uganda. So we, what we do is we do genomics uh, services. And the genomics, we start from uh, the raw data, from when, when a client comes, we download data from this, the sequencer. And then in the process, we go up to, for example, up to SNPs, and then we follow up. Uh, and we call, we call it products. So it, it, it depends on the client. If it, it is somebody who wants to be pub, uh, publication, that's our product. As if a student's uh, uh, up to the analysis. So that is what we do with genomics. And then in the that one also can apply to in animal breeding. You have genomics selection, population, uh, and diversity study. Also in one health, you can that can also apply to uh, pathogen genomics. Another area that we work on is uh, uh, proteomics. With proteomics, we work in both uh, uh, gel based and also uh, mass spec based. So again, we start from the raw data up to the products, up to the, the last product. And then uh, uh, another area that of omics that we work with is meta uh, metabolomics. We do both targeted and non-targeted. 
And then also the last one is uh, metagenomics. We do both uh, shotgun, and then uh, we also do uh, applicable. And in, in, all, in all that, we do capacity building. So capacity building, we do on site and also virtually. So it's connected. So, so uh, we, 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 we either work with the client on site or we also work with them virtually. And then I think that other thing that we do is working with all this data, we now integrate this data, work with the client, integrate the data, the omics, the proteomics, and the rest on the combined with the phenotypic data. And in the process, again, we, we bring in capacity development and capacity building. Another thing that we do is uh, we search uh, databases with the, with the client, we compare those databases with alignment and, and do evolutionary study. So in, in brief, this is what uh, uh, the services we do in bioinformatics. We basically, we work with all the omics data and then the process, we do capacity building. So from now on, I'm going to proceed to the, to the, to, to, to the presentation. Okay, so Peace talked about data science and I talk about bioinformatics. So what's the, what's bring these two together? But the common goal of bioinformatics and data science is to discover knowledge from data. So the, but the difference basically between the two areas is bioinformatics, we use biological data, basically DNA, proteins, and the rest. And the data science generalized, also data science also can use, uh, we also have biological data. But the tools are almost the same. You have data analytics tools, software program. So basically, they cross, so that's why Patira and, and Maga, we, we, we collaborate. So I want to make sure that in a layman's language, show that bioinformatics and data science have a common goal of discovering knowledge from the data. So what are the common tasks of bioinformatics? Uh, I already mentioned in, in, in the previous slides that one, you search. We use searching public available databases for information regarding genes, protein, RNA, and pathways, and, and so forth. So using that, it helped the bioinformaticians and then the client to, to do their job. And then, of course, compare sequence alignment, uh, uh, for example, like different genes and proteins, and also integrating and curating data, which I already explained uh, in the previous slide. Another thing that bioinformatics is very important in is analysis. For example, we do analysis, we work with the, with the One Health, uh, pathogen, pathogen surveillance and tracking. We also do GWAS, uh, and genetic diversity, and also uh, population structure. This combine both in, in, in animal breeding and wild health. So these are the common tasks of what we do in bioinformatics. Okay, capacity building. So we work with uh, Baker 1.0. We did a lot of work with Baker 1.0. So these are some of the contributions that we did with Baker 1.0. We supported Baker in uh, comparative genomics, for example, uh, comparing those in microbiology analysis. Uh, we did what, some work with uh, early stuff in milk and pork in Tanzania and Uganda. So that was part of capacity building. I think that we did, we supported the CGR uh, scientists in data analysis. We also work with them in manuscript preparation. So all these, some of them were on site and some of them, after working with them on the site, we make sure that we, we work with them until we get what we call a product. So that's our model. One of the things that we also did with them is we support the scientists for, 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 uh, from the NIAS. Again, we work with them with data analysis, experimental design, we were also involved with reviewing applications for challenge funds. So it was part of them. So we, we do on site and then after that we follow up. And sometimes we one on one by informatics support. And then every workshops in advance by informatics were there to work with Baker uh, 1.0. So this was the work that we did on site. Okay. So we did only do not work with Baker. So in Batira and, and, and Maga, we also work with Africa. So during COVID, after COVID-19, we decided, okay, what, how can we help these Africans in both bioinformatics and data science? So we put out a call that we needed to help 20 participants from all over Africa 
And these were the topics in bioinformatics, biological uh, data and genomic resources. So these were the topics that we put out there. And these were the criteria that we wanted for, for these uh, scientists and the researchers so that we can help them virtually. So after uh, getting that call out, we got more than 400 applicants from 33 countries. So this blue shows the countries that applied and the red shows that some of these Africans who are here were either students or fellows in some of these, these areas. So we wanted 20, we got more than 400. So what we did, okay, this is what we can do. So we had two cohorts. We divided the two cohorts for 10, 10 weeks. So we trained them virtually. After training them, so these are some of the output that we got. Okay, before I go to the output, so this is the, uh, the, the areas, the background of the people who applied. You can see from agriculture, animal genetics up to zoology. That means we need capacity building in the area of data science and bioinformatics in Africa. So we did, uh, because of the, uh, our capacity that we had, we, we, we trained for the two. And out of those 42 participants we trained, we got two publications. And then we had two PhD students who had data for almost two years, but they could not do anything. We helped them graduate. And we are now in, 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 in collaboration with some of these participants, but we still need 370 to, to train. So this is, we, was an eye opener for us that we need capacity building in data science and bioinformatics. In Africa. Okay, so in the same uh, in 2021, now this is virtual. So uh, Becca Ellery and then Institute of Biotechnology at Addis Ababa University, had, we had a training with them. And this is as our model. We started the training, and then in the process, one of the trainers, one of the trainees, uh, had her data. So we've been working with, with her from training. Up to now, the product, we got our first uh, publication. And now we're working with bioinformatics and it, 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 basically using the, 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 the genomics and we are getting information about genetic diversity. So our model is start building capacity from the top until you get the product. The product can be publication, can be, uh, for example, you can have some markers from the process, okay? Okay, so uh, we did the training, and in the process, we, we realized that we have all these areas of people working with goods in this country, around 10 countries with uh, almost 19 researchers. So all of them are going to have data. All of them are going to have data. How, how can we use these data? How can you make sure that this data is used properly for, for, for when animal breeding and also, also in one health? Okay, so with that, I'm now going to go back to Christian so we can introduce somebody who's going to talk about how we can make sure we use data to help us in Africa. Thank you very much. Back to you, Christian. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. And uh, I think uh, Peace can take uh, the screen now to move ahead with uh, a section of the presentation. Peace. I'm here. Thank you. Please go ahead. OK, so you, you let me know if you can. Yeah, you, maybe you can put it on the presentation mode. Yeah, I'm doing that. OK. OK, so um, uh, thank you once again, Christian and uh, Dr. Steven. So, Generally, I will be talking about data science uh, in its broad sense, but also uh, its applicability to animal breeding and one health, and um, also the potential areas in which we would like to train the scientists to be able to understand the data that's being generated in an effort to address the challenges in animal breeding and one health. So previously, we have trained scientists in collaboration with uh, Pateria Data Science uh, in trainings that are both for data science and bioinformatics. So commonly in data science, 
um, we train a data exploration. Now the data that's being generated is quite a lot of data. So we need to be able to explore the data and um, sort of discover hidden patterns in this data. And then we need to be able to, you know, do the descriptive statistics, summarize the data, and do effective visualization so we can be able to make sense of the various data that's being collected. Um, the other thing that we emphasize in the training is also how to do inference. Okay, with inference, we mean how can you use um, common statistics and mathematics methods to draw conclusions from the data that's being generated. So with this, we emphasize things like hypothesis testing, uh, we also emphasize, um, you know, um, prediction of uh, various parameters. So depending on the information that you're collecting and the aim of collecting uh, the data that you're going to be collecting, we do teach using your own data that you've generated, but also we use uh, different uh, data to make sure that uh, the scientists are understanding the information that they are collecting or uh, they are understanding information that's being collected. You don't have to um, collect the information yourself, but can you use the information in the various databases to make decisions, to understand how you can address uh, challenges uh, in animal breeding as well as One Health? Uh, the other important skill that we would like the scientists to have is prediction. Now, uh, with prediction, it's important for us to be able to go into these vast amounts of data, uh, pick relevant information, and use it for prediction. So this is a skill uh, that is largely lacking. Uh, we train and we use machine learning algorithms, uh, various machine learning algorithms, again, with various statistical tools to be able to understand the data and do prediction, whether we are doing mathematical prediction or um, statistical prediction. Okay, so I move forward. Okay, so what's the main challenge? Okay, what are these country challenges, multi country challenges in animal breeding and one health? So, one big problem that we have, especially in Africa, is that we do not have unified data recording systems. So various scientists are collecting information and they are keeping it in various places. And sometimes uh, we don't even know the information that's being collected. We don't know where it is kept. Uh, sometimes you just read about it. So it's important for us to be able to sort of have curated databases that are going to contain this kind of information. And um, today we will be looking at why we need to have this information in one central location. Okay, the other challenge is some of the animal breeds are transboundary. So we need to be able to perform evaluations that also cover uh, transboundary so that we can understand how we can improve challenges. Now, some of these challenges are also transboundary. So it's important for us to be able to have information in one place regarding um, all the different regions, for example. Um, again, diseases can also be transboundary. So it's important, again, for us to have information in one location. And then another challenge is that there are some regions that don't have enough uh, resources, infrastructure, to actually address these challenges or sort of for animal breeding. Uh, so this also needs to be addressed um, so that we are able to collect reliable information. So in as much as we can have skills, if we do not have the information in the beginning, it may not help um, to address challenges relating to Africa. And then definitely we have a big skills and knowledge gap in animal breeding and One Health in Africa. So we are here to bridge this gap for all people, all scientists, anyone that is interested in understanding how to manage, collect, interpret and use data in animal breeding and one health um okay so those challenges that we've seen they need a good data strategy a comprehensive data strategy to be able to address those challenges now this comprehensive data strategy has certain aspects 
that we train you to understand, implement, and use. Okay, and the first one is data collection. Uh, we the, A good data strategy for you, you should be able to collect the relevant data that you are going to use um, using the correct tool as well. So it's important to be um, aware of that. And then the other thing is we need good data architecture and integration. So uh, we have vast data, we have genomics data, we have phenotypic data. Um, largely, analysis is done um, in separation for phenotypic and um, genomics data. However, in order for us to be able to get better insights from the data that we are collecting for animal breeding, we need to be able to integrate this kind of information. It is a challenge, but it can be done, and it's important for uh, the people that are generating and using this data uh, to be able to understand how to do that. Uh, the other thing you need to uh, be aware of is data storage and technology. So again, I said uh, we have challenges of storing large volumes of data in Africa, but we need to be able to address that so that we can have our data stored in a central location. Now, collecting data may seem easy. The real challenge is how do we get insights and analyze this data. So again, we need these skill sets, which we um, we offer and also train. We need the skill sets for data analysis, prediction, and modeling, including visualization. Now, one thing that is usually overlooked is data governance or privacy and security. It is difficult um, for researchers to sort of put their data in a central location if they are not sure of how private and secure this data is. So it is important to have a data governance policies in place and stipulate clearly how you are going to protect the data, how secure the data is. That is one way in which we will be encouraging our different researchers to actually collect the data and put it in one central location. Um, going forward. Okay, so we have seen that we need a good data strategy and um, we need to be able to analyze the data. Now, the other thing that is important is visualization of the data. Okay, so in this um, quest, okay, to address challenges in animal breeding and uh, one health, we have also looked at the synergy of data science, bioinformatics, capacity building, which we have seen up to until now, and web GIS in addressing these multi-country challenges. Now the web GIS, uh, uh, we use it to create dashboards and it is important because uh, for the multi-countries, they are having, uh, you know, different data collection strategies. That means there could be various databases that are capturing the information. How do we integrate the data from these various databases and have them in one platform in which you can be able to view the data in a snapshot and be able to understand which challenges are being um, faced in the different countries in a snapshot. Okay, so the web GIS platform will be specifically helpful in understanding challenges of animal breeding as well as challenges of one health. So specifically, it will enable us in the integration of these diverse sources, as I said, um, including environmental, the genomics, as well as the phenotypes. But it also facilitates uh, the modeling. It combines, you know, uh, again, bioinformatics and data science, as well as capacity development. Now, it should be noted that um, Bioinformatics generates a lot of data. So it's very important to have skill sets in data science so that you can actually navigate and understand um, the bioinformatics you know, data itself. And then in addressing challenges of One Health, again, we need to be able to integrate data from health, animal, environment, because the interplay of this poses a challenge. So we need a way of having all data collected from these uh, different elements in one place where we can be able to um, understand how this plays out. Okay, so at Magma Consultants, 
in conjunction with Patera, we have come up with uh, prototypes of our web GIS dashboards that could help. We also have used uh, real data to sort of understand how we can have all this information from various databases in one place in order to help us to address um, these uh, challenges. Okay, so the first uh, prototype of the dashboard that we have is one that is used for tracing and tracking zoonotic pathogens associated with animal seeds dissemination. Okay, so this particular prototype um, for the dashboard uses simulated data. And um, we are using simulated data from Kenya, at different region, regions. Um, so the dashboard in itself contains information, animal breeding, you know, uh, livestock, the seeds, um, the pathogens, and the source of the pathogen. So we can take a look at um, how this looks like. Okay, so this is a snapshot of how the dashboard looks like. So uh, we have information from different counties. We have um, the different livestock. You can also understand the seeds that are associated with these, and then the breed. You can also uh, visualize the zoonotic pathogen associated with the livestock um, in that particular county, as well as the source of the pathogen. You can also just check out the distribution um, of these in the different uh, counties. Now, this dashboard here, all these dashboards here, um, we have links to the dashboard. You can explore the dashboard. So I'll demonstrate just one, and then for the rest, um, to save time, we shall just move. So I'm going to sort of stop. Uh, let me see if you can. Can you see um, the Google here? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, so we have links to the dashboards. We can um, sort of go in there. Um, it's loading. Hopefully the internet um, is fast enough. Okay, I think it has loaded. Okay, so you can navigate the dashboard. You can navigate the dashboard, um, for example, for one county. Okay. Um, and then sort of try to understand among the cattle, okay? Maybe um, with this animal seed, which pathogen is associated with this, okay? For example, here we are seeing the protozoa and we are seeing the protozoa coming from the animal um, itself. So we can also, um, on this side, I'm trying to remove the zoom screen here. Okay, we can also be able to uh, check which breed, okay? Um, for which breed, whichever breed you want to see, um, what is the livestock, what are the seeds, data inf uh, about the seed, the source of the pathogen, um, ETC. So basically, this is how the prototype works for this particular um, dashboard here. So I will go back to my presentation. Okay, so again, uh, this is just to demonstrate that you can use this same platform to either visualize information from whichever county. So even if this information from the different counties, for example, is coming from different databases, um, the web dashboard can help you to um, connect all the databases and be able to uh, visualize that information in one platform and a very simple platform. Again, um, we also created a dashboard now using antimicrobial resistance data. Okay, so this one here used, we used real data. Okay, we used real data from Vivlai. Now, Vivlai is a global research data sharing platform. Uh, there are different companies that um, put their data inside there. And we got access to this data in a challenge that we went through and actually created a dashboard uh, that can be used to sort of view uh, antimicrobial resistance. Now, um, since there are many organizations, companies here that um, submit data to Vivlai, 
we chose one for this particular um, prototype. We chose Pfizer and we chose Pfizer because Pfizer had um, the most consistent information across um, different years, but also across different countries. So just to understand how the data that uh, looks like, the data set that we used has um, 17 years of data from 83 countries with uh, 345 pathogens, stroke species, with over 800,000 isolates. Okay, so I will, so in a snapshot, uh, this is how the data looks like. Um, it's in spreadsheets, but you see, it's quite difficult for us to understand data in spreadsheets, to summarize, visualize, understand it in a snapshot, but also in the easiest way possible. So that's why we created, um, the visualization. Okay, so this is also an interactive dashboard. Um, it's also an interactive dashboard, uh, but I may not demonstrate. If you would like to demonstrate, we can always share the link. Okay, so basically uh, the information in the databases it can be visualized, okay? Uh, in this particular case, we have this information was collected from different regions, Africa, Asia, Europe, ETC. And also we have the, you know, the number of countries. Yeah. Okay. So how much information was collected in which period of time, in which country and the region where the country is. Okay. So you can also visualize the first challenge that we have here in Africa is that we have the least information in the databases. Okay. So again, uh, this is a challenge. One of the biggest challenges is that we lack data on the continent, okay, compared to others. So we can see that Africa sort of has um, maybe not the least, but yeah, the data is still not um, as much as in Europe. So this is a challenge that we may need to address on the continent for us to be able to address more challenges. Um, again, if we look at Kenya, Okay, in particular now, uh, we chose just one country in Kenya in particular. You can see that information was collected in 2013, 2014, then 2021. So again, we are not consistent in collecting information, but it's very, very important to be consistent. If you compare Kenya, for example, and the UK, you can clearly see that information here, 2004, straight up to 2021. So they are consistent in collecting information. Okay, so as a continent, we need to be able to address this challenge, but we can also, we can only address this challenge if we understand the need and why we need to have data in place. Okay, so um, again, the, we have another prototype for this same dashboard where we can actually visualize the resistance uh, for the pathogen to the different um, antibiotics that we have. We can check whether a given pathogen is uh, resistant to a given antibiotic like imipinem, ceftriaxone, and pislin, etc. Okay, so this interactive dashboard, if you go inside there, can help you to understand um, the sort of resistance. Okay, uh, this one uh, we just created it for Kenya and Uganda uh, just to show. So you can always understand the resistance of the pathogen in Kenya and then understand the resistance of the pathogen in Uganda. And consequently, we can still add many other countries. So you're able to navigate and understand uh, maybe variations in resistance to different antibiotics in the different countries. Um, again, um, this is just a demonstration that you can actually just check out one. Uh, pathogen and be able to understand whether it is susceptible to whichever antibiotic or if information is actually not available for that particular antibiotic um, in relation to resistance uh, from one of these uh, pathogens. Okay, so um, again, you can know whether it is resistant, susceptible um, to whichever and um, antibiotic. However, of course, we need information, we need data. Um, so this data is, it's not a lot of data. We have only 62 samples in this particular, um, in the database that was used to create uh, this dashboard. So the more data we have, the more we understand um, what is happening uh, within 
the continent and be able to address more challenges. So yes, as I said earlier, you can always compare different countries. You can compare whether, uh, for example, Equali is susceptible to imipinem in this country, in Uganda, in Kenya, etc. You can always navigate the dashboards uh, depending on what you want to know uh, in relation to these challenges that we have with One Health and um, animal breeding. Um, we also have another prototype for a dashboard which we can use to visualize information. Now, a very comprehensive one where you can visualize information about traits, production systems, livestock management, disease prevalence, vet services, omics data availability, data science availability in the different regions. So we are able to do this when we have data that's being collected, albeit in various databases, but also uh, that can be accessible uh, into okay and stored into maybe a central place so that we are able to um, have information. So we have a bit of simulated information here, and um, uh, this particular dashboard here, you can be able to uh, to understand or view the you know the animal, the country, the trait of the animal, uh, what kind of capacity building services are there, okay? What kind of production systems are there? Um, what type of mating, what causes the, the prevalent diseases there, okay, the services available, distance to health center, etc. And most importantly, the dashboard can help you to understand the availability of information, specifically genomics, uh, metabolomics. As we all know, the, this kind of information is very important in understanding these challenges or uh, in animal breeding, but also um, data science services, okay? Uh, you can generate all the omics data, but if you cannot make sense out of that data, it still doesn't help. So that we can understand in a snapshot how much information is being generated if we have bioinformatics services, if we lack of data science services, and so we can fill in these gaps, but also improve the collection of data if we notice that data is missing, okay? Um, so here we've chosen uh, a country, a particular breed, a particular trait, a particular production system, and we can see that we have only the proteomics data. And um, maybe if I went into the dashboard, I would probably live dashboard, I'll check uh, which particular information that we have and sort of be able to understand how we can address which services do we need to offer, which services are lacking, which kind of data is lacking. Um, and uh, with that, I would like to say thank you for listening, and I would like to stop my presentation here. Back to you, Christian. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Peace, and uh, everyone for the wonderful presentation. I hope it is helping everyone here present to understand uh, how deep is our need for data, data infrastructures and human resource, our capacity to be able to make uh, sense of what we have. Though now it is clear that Africa, in Africa in general, we are still uh, lacking a lot of data. We still have a lot of effort to put in place to ensure that we have the information we need to advance with animal breeding and genetics improvement, to advance with One Health and to be able to tackle some of the wicked challenges that we have in, the, in Africa in general. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, it's now time for the Q&A session. And I can see that there have been a few contributions from the chat and uh, I think one of the contribution, the first question was, or information was coming from Paul. Paul, are you there? Paul from FO? Yes, yes, I'm here. Yes, I saw that you have an info, important information to share. Maybe you can also uh, share that so that uh, people understand and share also with their respective uh, country focal point. Thank you. Okay, uh, yes, thanks for offering me the, uh... The floor. I see my the lighting in, in my room is not that good. You maybe not, can't see me too well. Yes. But uh, 
Yes, I just wanted to share with the group that that uh, FAO has just, uh, it actually was almost two months ago now, had offered, had launched the the decennial, let's say, process of preparing the report on the state of the world's animal genetic resources for food and agriculture. And part of this process, or let's say the, one of the main parts of this process is the country reporting where, you know, there are a number of different questions, actually quite a long questionnaire where country basically respond to give an idea of, of the status of their you know, say infrastructure and activities with regard to managing animal genetic resources in their countries. And uh, as you may or may not know, uh, each of the, you know, the FAO member countries nominates a person called the National Coordinator for animal, the Management of Animal Genetic Resources, Food and Agriculture, who is the main liaison between their country and FAO on animal genetic issues. Uh, they're usually a member of uh, of the ministry, like either of the ministry, you know, the the branch working with animal production and genetics, or maybe at a you know, government research institute. However, this you know this national coordinator, it's because it's quite a long process, quite a detailed questionnaire. They may, or it's unlikely that they will know all the answers themselves. So, they, you know, there's an encouragement of having a, a very participatory approach. So, you know, my my uh, chat message was just to encourage people to, you know, if they're interested, to contact their national coordinators and express their interest in helping to, you know, contribute in any way that could be feasible. And so, in the chat, I, I all of the national coordinators, the, the list for each country, are, is uh, available on the FAO website. I gave uh, the link there. Or if you want to have additional information, feel free to contact me directly. I've given uh, my my email address there as well. The deadline for providing these reports is is the end of June this year. So there is a you know, almost six. There are almost six months of time to to do this process. But uh, I just wanted to share that information. So thank you for giving me the floor to give more detail. Thank you. Thank you very much paul and it is clear to understand that uh, we need to ensure that the national uh, the country focal points and the coordinators are having also information that we need to share with fao etc and uh, i think uh, uh, peace and uh, uh, stephen should be able to also think and understand how Patira and Marma and the dashboard that we are putting in place can be contributing across country to be able to gather some of this information, not just for the state of farm animal genetics resources in Africa, but also even at the African Union. Uh, we have been working on the, the Biennial Review for the CADEP, uh, and there is still a lot of challenges gathering data across country to be sure that we fit effectively, that we move forward with the, uh, the, the indexes in the CADEP. So uh, this is also an, an opportunity for all the stakeholders, for us to come together and see how we can use the potential of human resource and capacity we have on the continent, at least to start building some of the platform based on what uh, Marma and Patira are already doing. If I could just add a few more details that, that I did not say that the reporting is actually done on a, a, a online questionnaire so that the the national coordinator could eventually even share the link to the questionnaire. It's it's something like you may say like a Google Docs where people can you know all contribute to a, a the the document itself or they can provide a, the PDF version which then would have to be uh, you know, re you know copied and pasted into the the, que the online questionnaire. And then the national coordinator is the only person who can actually submit the final document. But as I said, anyone can contribute to this. And I also, for some of the other stakeholders in this meeting, in addition to reporting by the countries, there is a, another questionnaire that is reporting by organizations that, that uh, contribute to management of animal genetic resources. Exactly. Although we have a list of 
some of those and it's maybe not exhaustive. So if any of you are re representing an organization that you know, presumably you would not be you know, participating if you're not you know, dealing with animal genetic resources, feel free also to you know, send an email to me so we can add you to the list of, of uh, international organizations that contribute to management of animal genetic resources. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you. And uh, please, we have the next question coming to you. Um, to please, please, how can I enroll in your about statistics and uh, data science course? I don't know if please you have something to say there. Yes. Um, okay. So um, currently, we don't have a course running. We are going to have a course running soon. And uh, we will be able to share the link uh, with uh, those that uh, would be interested. However, for organizations as well, we do work with you to um, tailor the course to your organization. Different organizations have different biostatistics and data science needs. So we tend to tailor them. Uh, we can also have the broad courses. So we would make the announcement and share the link. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is coming from Raphael. Uh, does uh, the first one, the, the, there are two questions. The first one, does the WebGIZ platform uh, analytical tools cover areas such as genomic prediction models and uh, genomic selection? Maybe uh, any of you can address the first question before we move to the second. Okay, I will address that. Uh, uh... First of all, thank you, Raphael. I think we are working together too. So uh, the, the, the dashboard that, that piece presented, I mean, present three dashboard. Two were simulated data and one was real data. So uh, the simulated data, we worked with uh, Dr. Christian to come with that. So to answer your question, yes, but we have to work with you so that you can guide us how to put that information that you are requested in, in the dashboard, okay? Okay. Uh, and the second question, uh, is there any training on data sampling and collection techniques to govern data collection to ensure data collected to has enough has enough power to make valuable inference and adequate adequately address the objective of the study? Yes. yes I will also answer that question again. So uh, the presentation again, we had one was real data, and this real data came from Fabli. They already, we, we, we were part of the, the challenges. They already worked with the data and they gave us that. Okay, the, the simulated data, of course, we worked with the Christian. So to answer that question again, we'll work with him. And we, we, we work with him, go through the same process. And then when we got data that have, have, has enough power, then we can put in the dashboard. Okay. Um, can I uh, also yeah. say something? Yeah. Yeah, so please. generally, generally in the trainings that we offer, um, we do offer trainings on how to know whether you are collecting enough data that has enough statistical power to generally understand differences that will help you answer your research question. So we do that broadly. But um, if you have your own data, we also help you to understand whether the data that you have has enough power to answer research questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we also had um, a request coming from uh, Dr. Azwasia from Mozambique to include uh, Mozambique in the good COP. Yes, I think Elias is already working with the Mozambique team on something on GOAT, and uh, we can discuss further and see how they joined the team at Baker, which was already working on the community of practice on goat genetics and the genomics. And the team is really growing there. Then uh, we also have a question from uh, Dr. Uh, Olori, Victor Olori to Katrin. Do you have a strategic plan for the training of the last mile technician to allow the uptake and use of technologies? of technology, example, extra simulation, AI, embryo transfer, etc. Oh, is Catherine, 
think I don't know. I think the training is mostly to Catherine. Ah uh, yes, thanks, Christian. Um, so we still to develop the framework or the mechanisms through which we're going to do conduct the trainings. But definitely, that is a key element under product development. So we definitely have to incorporate that. So whilst we're working, we're looking at the big picture, but we'll definitely create the courses that we need to be carrying out under Baker 2.0. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank Just you. to emphasize on that, uh, that the vision of the next uh, Baker uh, 2.0 is to ensure that science and technologies are really transferred to the ground to the end users the last mile technicians and the farmers and uh, this goes of course with training also of extension workers to be able to use the technologies on the ground and make the necessary transformation but this is something that still need to be well crafted and embedded into specific programs like we have Hillary farmer facing program African and Asian dairy genetic gains, uh, tropical poultry genetic solutions in collaboration with national partners as well to be sure that we have these uh, technologies effectively uh, uh, shared or transferred to farmers or to the end users. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a question from uh, Charlotte. Which all tools or software are used by MCI? This is by Magma. Will today's recording be shared with the participant? I can answer the, that one, yes. We'll clean it and share. But uh, in terms of software by from Magma, or skills that Magma can offer, please. OK, yes, thank you. Um, so at Magma, we train um, data science, analysis using Python. Uh, we use R, we use Stata, use SPSS, we use Excel in yeah. training um, the various skills. Thank you. Thank you, please. And I Thank can you, see uh, Ellison from Zambia is uh, really interested to know further about Magma and uh, other activities. Then. Uh, Victor Olori is coming back. We need to discuss a strategy for Abnet to Snejas Snejas effort with Magma and Patira to allow the Abnet objective to be realized. Yes, Prof, uh, that is exactly the objective, and that's what uh, uh, we have been working. That's why we have been working with Magma and Patira to make sure that uh, this is just uh, the beginning of our collaboration. To work with them, to work with Baker, CTLGH, SunBio, and AUNEPAD to ensure that we have good coordinations and good strategic objective laid down and implemented. So that will be followed. From here, we are going to push together with Peace and uh, uh, Catherine, Amber, Isidore, and Eric. We are going to push that agenda. Yeah. That is, I think, all for the type questions. I don't know if anyone has the uh, hands up. You can still uh, raise your voice if there is something or should. Yes, I can see Ellison, please go ahead. On mute. Yes, uh, thank you very much uh, for the presentation, especially the, uh, the issues concerning with um, the coordinators. Uh, we have, I think, some of the coordinators in our countries. Uh, some of them are not working with the government now, and then also uh, uh, on, possibly in other countries. So there might be need to review the coordinators because this information comes, it doesn't reach the people responsible in time. And at the end of the day, you find that uh, FAO would have actually closed the admission of this information. So we'll try to, link to, uh, to follow it up. So we are requesting FAO to help us so that new coordinators can be appointed in these countries. Thank you, especially Zan. Thank you very much, uh, Ellison. I think Paul will take note of that. And uh, unless he has something to say. Uh, no, I have nothing to add. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, Dr. Asasia, please, the voice from Mozambique. Yeah. You have the floor, yeah. please. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tiambo, and to all participants. Uh, I, I put my um, request in the chat. So I'd like to know whether there will be an opportunity for researchers from Mozambique to be trained on bioinformatics and that and on data science. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Doc. And uh, I can talk on behalf of Magma and Patira to say yes. When once the call uh, piece uh, mention will be out, it will be shared widely to everybody across Africa and uh, beyond. And we should be able to contribute and benefit from their expertise. Uh, later on, I believe uh, Peace will provide better information on that. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. So if not, yeah, okay. Prof. Olori, please, yeah, please unmute. Yeah, thank you. I just want to thank all the organizers. Um, this has been a very, very important eye opener to all of us, uh, making all of us aware of what's actually available right now in Africa. I'm an advocate of non-waste um, of time by different people trying to repeat the same thing that's already done. And so the information available here, especially from Patira, uh, Professor Pio and um, um, Peace, I'm really grateful to you. Um, I really thank you, Isudo, and, um, and, and you, uh, uh, the coordinator here for, for Tiambo Christian, for the presentations you gave, which are already pointing to what ABNet is trying to achieve. I think I just want to emphasize again that um, before we leave here, you should please devise uh, what plan we're going to use to make sure that perhaps at the next ABNet meeting or something, we can have people like Peace or Opio attending so that we can then you know, make clear the plan that ABNet has as, as Isidore outlined in his short presentation and then work with the leadership of CTLG to see how we can synergize. Because we already, the question Raphael asked about data collection and genomics evaluation, we need to see how we can guide or help uh, um, MCI to tailor their, their, their platform or the, the, the web GIS towards the genomic presentation of genomic results, for example, because that one is a continuous process so that we don't have to start to develop this web GIS again. If you have some, you have something brilliant for diseases, for example, can we have something like that for genomic evaluation or genetic evaluation or breeding values? And how can we use this going ahead to encourage all farmers to have access to it? So there is a, a, a very interesting, um, a very interesting uh, uh, outcome, you know, that we can achieve from this meeting today. I really want to just thank all the organizers uh, and to say thank you for, for putting this together and let's have a concrete plan on how to go forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you. So we'll make all effort possible. And uh, I can assure you that uh, we'll make to you, to Abnet and uh, City Edge, Edge and Ilri and other partners, some propositions on how we can work closely with uh, uh, Magma and with Patira. So, and we arrange with Peace and uh, Stephen to uh, to be part of the next upnet meeting as well thank you